I'm continuing my tour of the open source Goxel image editor. And I just want to show you the main tools you would use to build up the actual Im the actual voxels in your image. And the two big ones are the brush and the shape tool. And the brush, you've had a brief look at, maybe you've had a brief look at it. The normal way it wants to operate is on one voxel at a time. And I find that really handy for doing just, you know, basic detail work. It's just going one at a time. You can, if you want, make it bigger. So I don't want to do one at a time, I want to do a little bit more. I can make a differently shaped. I can start with a, a square shape. I can do a round shape. Now obviously it's round in the sense of sort of an attempt at making a sphere out of voxels. It's not actually round. And a cylindrical shape. And you can see how it wants to stick to the edges of things that are sort of already in the image. And so you have to develop your intuition for how to build that up a little bit with some practice. I like to stick to one at a time with a brush. I don't usually build things this big, but if I do, I'm not usually in these big chunks. The other thing you can use is the shape tool. And the shape tool is very handy for larger structured shapes. So I want to build up a sphere. I can build up a sphere. If I want to build out a cube, it's really a rectangle. But I mean you could make it a cube, but you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be careful with it to make it actually be a perfect cube. And then there's the cylinder shape. The cylinder shape wants to stay vertically aligned. So you can see that I'm pulling it out from the side, but it actually still wants to go up and down. The other thing you're going to notice is that because these shapes want to cling to an existing structure, if I try to build a cylinder here and I don't want it to go out to the edges, default uh, what I like to do is somehow figure out how to perfectly. What, what am I going to do here? It's not. It's just, ugh, right? That's tricky. I would not have built those up one one layer at a time. You don't have to. They've got a option to do two steps, which will allow you to start by setting it how you want in the horizontal plane, and then make an adjustment. I'm not holding it down. I, I once I released it, it knows that the next step is for me to select the height and so it's just following and then when I click the second click that says okay I'm done and that's the image that I want. That's not the only way you have to to handle the the necessity of sort of clinging but it's the first one that's really handy. I didn't, I didn't explain it, but in case you're thinking, wow, that's weird that it makes it cling, just think about it for a second. If I want to paint something in this corner, right, I can drag myself around and I can just draw it there and then I can come back here and there it is. But if I'm at this angle, right, and I want to put something in that corner, it has no way of knowing. And so that's why it, that's why they had to build this sort of clingy interface is because there has to be some way to tell it where you are. You're, you're, you're operating from a two-dimensional interface and trying to to make what looks like a three-dimensional image and so you gotta it has to make adjustments and so that was the design decision and I actually find that once you get used to it it's 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 fine it's easy to work around and it's easy to work with that's all I've got to say about those so those are the those are the shapes you've got the brush and you've got the shape tools and those are the main ways you're going to use to add elements to your image.